Um, as I said before, we are working on a progressive plan to improve the overall welfare of every citizen. Uh, the welfare is not only a matter of salary, whilst we understand the importance of salaries, it's quality of life, quality of your health care, the quality of your infrastructure, the cost of your electricity, the cost of your water, the quality of your water. We're working on having treated water to every single person on the coast to bring down the cost of electricity by half. Definitely every sector of employees, their time will come. You know, everything is done uh, in a very uh, holistic way. We have to understand the functionalities of the economy um, and every category of workers will be addressed. And, and we're starting from critical areas where there were great anomalies. Um, and that is how we have started and we're progressing well. And the teachers are saying that they're the foundation of all other professions and occupations, so they require an increase. Oh, definitely. I value the work of the teachers tremendously. The teachers are an important asset to our country. Um, my own parents were teachers, so no one has to tell me the value of teachers. Uh, the entire life was spent in teaching profession and the ed education profession. So the day for teachers will come. As I said, it's progressive. It's a holistic approach. We are dealing with the greatest anomalies in the system first. Uh, you have nurses that were working uh, just about $98,000. We'll now be working $160,000. So we have to great, deal with the greatest anomalies and then we're coming forward. No time frame. I don't want to, uh, to give you a time frame, but as you can see, things are happening very quickly in this country. And what about the prison officers and the dentists? No, they, I couldn't go through the entire list of employees, all allied health workers. There's a list of hundreds. All of them have been adjusted greatly. So that entire allied list of health workers, I just couldn't go through that entire list. Um, um, and uh, oh, That's why I'm saying the anomalies in the system. You will see certain categories were adjusted, just like the military. So it's to bridge some of the anomalies in the system. And when is government likely to start uh, inviting new bids or tenders for the body calls public? Well, we are doing assessment now, you know, we have quite some, uh, a lot of interesting proposals from different bilateral partners. When I was in the, in the U.S., uh, I had a meeting with the energy secretary and her entire uh, staff, and I mentioned this project and the importance of the project and opening up for the U.S. Uh, investors, just as it's open up for any other investor. The Canadians have uh, expressed some interest, so there's a lot of bilateral talks that are going on. And then we'll have to make a structured uh, decision as to how we go forward. Mr. President, um, unless there is another question by any of my colleagues, um, quickly, sir, you and your government have been repeatedly accused by the opposition of sidelining the, the government uh, elected bodies and going directly to, uh, to implement decisions or take actions. Uh, what is your response to this repeated claim? We saw it in Mokar uh, Kadia. I'll, I'll address both. Go yeah. Do, do you want a lazy president, an office-ridden president, a president who is bonded by four walls, or you want a proactive, active president who is in the ground and who is ready to work with every single citizen, every single body, local body, foreign body, uh, whatever body? Once it is for the development of the people and community, this president is ready to work. Let's take Maka. Maka, what is the greatest democracy? Democracy from the ground, democracy from the grassroots. The president of Guyana went to Maka to meet the people. I went to meet the people. The people raised their concerns with us. The NDC, everybody is open. It's an open meeting. Everybody can be there. There is no bias for anyone. The NDC was there. The people raised their concerns. They raised their priorities. And the government reacted to their concerns and priorities. We are not reacting to what we want. We are reacting to what the people want. That is the greatest functionality of democracy reacting to what the people want, giving the people what they want, not what an official want. So when the president goes to these communities, I went to the Amsterdam, you saw it, and I do everything open. I tell the guys I'm very angry with them now that they're not live. Because I told them, put everything live. There is greatest transparency that the people see. I went to the Amsterdam. Councils from the NDC, they were all there. The people were there. The people requested help. We responded. We responded. Today, up in that group there, you have a lot of young men from their pole street. After my visit, you can go and talk to them. You know what I'm talking to them about today? Skills development, 
education, getting them jobs, bringing them uh, into the economy, transforming lives. That is what I'm about. That is what my energy is on. So not only are local bodies and local organs involved, the people of this country are involved. The people of this country are determining what their priorities are, you know, what their priorities are. And that is why I don't have time to, I don't have the luxury of time. The little sleep that I have is enough to give me enough energy to go for the people. And that is what I'll do. You will see me in every community, I've repeated this. Every single one who's ready to work with us would work with us, would come with us. There is no, there, there is no separation of anything. But what about direct engagement and consultation with the elected bodies? I have no problem. The Ministry of Local Government. Look, you're talking about direct uh, engagement. I'm happy that you corrected uh, your last story on the vendors at Georgetown Hospital. When there's this narrative that the Main City Council was never involved, tons of letters went to them. Tons of letters went to them. If you have a sick family or you are sick one day and you can't get into that hospital because you are blocked at the entrance, what will be the outcome? How would you feel then? We need sometimes to put ourselves in the position of others in this country and understand that pain, understand that difficulty. And that is what I do every day as a president. We are ready to work with every single group. Many of these NDCs write me every day and I respond to their needs. They won't, they won't tell you about that. They're right. But what has been lacking, what has been lacking is direct consultation with the people in the communities. And I am responsible for all the people of this country. And I must go, I must listen. You go to Barakara. You, you, you saw from Barakara when I was in there. No officials ever visited. Barakara. When I went there, they told me we vote 99% against you. I said, I love you equally as I love anyone else. Go to Barakara now and see what we're doing. Barakara and Kanji Cook is being transformed. We're creating agricultural blocks. We're cleaning canals. We're giving them agricultural help. We're helping them to increase production, building community facilities. What else do we want? A local democratic organ should be happy when the central government, outside of its normal support, is coming directly and presenting help, giving the people support, giving the people help, responding to their priorities. This is what it is about. This is about changing life. It's about taking direct responsibility. It's about presenting leadership. You go to those very communities and ask them, whether Mokar and I said, when, 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 when does the local leaders come to talk to them? The people complain. There is absolutely no barrier between the presidency and the people. And that is what I'm about. Bringing this country together, working community by community. And trust me, trust what I'm telling you today. The results will come for the benefit of man and prosperity will come to every home. I guarantee you this. President Ali, could you give us an update on the Ethnic Relations Commission? Well, you know, there's a parliamentary process that is ongoing. So as soon as I have all the names from a different process, I'm very ready. And the teaching service commission. See, I think there is one outstanding name or something. I, I was hoping to wrap that up sometime this week. I'm still hoping. Um, so definitely. Uh, both should be submitting that name for the TSC? I don't have the details here, but I'm telling you that uh, we are almost in a position ready for the teaching service commission. And President. the judicial service commission? Well, that, that is a product out of the Public Service Commission. You know this. Mr. President, we just saw that trade between Ghana and the UAE was $300 million last year. Uh, can you perhaps tell us about what sectors contributed to that and how do you see that increasing this year and in subsequent years? Well, uh, I, I, I can get the specific sectors for you on what is existing between the UAE. But definitely in the services sector, technology uh, it's, and agriculture, these are low-hanging foods for us. I mean, uh, maybe one day I hope the UAE can organize a, a kind of information tour for media for us to see what is happening in these countries. Sometimes we are very narrowed by our view. 
when you talk about smart hospital innovation, the use of technology to improve governance system, enhance transparency and accountability, ease of doing business. So we have a lot of meetings with, uh, with the UAE develop the Abu Dhabi Development Fund, the uh, direct enga engagement with government corporations and agency, uh, government-owned companies, uh, to help us expedite uh, our transformation, our digital transformation, our technological transformation, and transformation of our services sector. This is very, very critical. Thank you. Thank you.